So let's go ahead and try another uh, simplifying, rational simplifying rational expressions. Sorry about that. When we have x squared plus 2x minus 15 over x squared minus 9. Now, I told you before, the way I'm trying to set these videos up is where we can go ahead and start easier and progressively move harder, and we can see the difference between challenging problems and non-challenging problems. Here we have x squared plus 2x minus 15 over x squared minus 9. Well, again, the main thing that you want to do is factor. Factoring is going to be key when doing anything when simplifying rational expressions. Number one rule, remember this, number one, factor, factor, factor. I tell my students this all the time. You have to factor, okay? So what I do is I just take the numerator and I separate that and I go ahead and I factor that separately. So I'm going to do x squared plus 2x minus 15. Now you want to have a good foundation on factoring and we have videos for you guys so you can do that. And what we do is we do the x method. So I drop down the 2, so that's a positive 2, and I bring down this minus 15 here. Good. Now I ask myself, what are two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to a positive 2? So I know that 5 times negative 2, so that'd be a negative 2 right there, is equal to negative 10. Well, that doesn't give me 15, though, but it would add to a positive 3. So that actually doesn't even work, right? And that's what we want to do. We want to do guess and check, and I want you guys to see that. Um, that it's not always going to work, but you have to keep just you have to keep going. What if we did five times negative three? What would happen there? Well, that would give me my negative fifteen. Good, right? And then what if I did five plus negative three? That gives me my positive two. So when we're dealing with simplifying rational expressions, if you have a good foundation on factoring, Simplifying rational expressions will be that much easier, okay? So now I know that factoring this, I would put my positive 5 here and my negative 3 here. It doesn't matter. You can put one, the negative 3 where the 5 is, and you can put the 5 where the negative 3 is. It doesn't matter as long as you have those two numbers. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and say that... Um, well, again, I tell everybody, take the square root of x squared, which would just be x, or the square root of any variable squared would be that variable. And I have x plus 5 times x minus 3. Now, a lot of people say, Brian, okay, I understand where you're going with that, but I don't know where this plus 5 comes from, and I don't know where the minus 3 comes from, and they get all confused. The plus 5, I just brought in x. And since this is a positive 5, I put a plus 5. And then since this is a minus 3, I put the negative 3. Or since this is a negative 3, I put minus 3. Same difference. That's all you have to do, and it works every single time as long as there's not a number in front of the variable squared right here. Yes, I know, there really is a 1, but I'm just saying it for the purposes to make it easier for you guys. Then we put that over, well, x squared minus 9, that's what you call a difference of squares. I'll go ahead and make a video for you guys on that. But that's x plus 3 times x minus 3. And there you go. See, number one rule, factor. Why? Because now all you have to do is eliminate similar binomials, ones that are the same. x minus 3 and x minus 3 are the same, so we can just cancel those right out. So now, if we look at our answer, and let's go back to the green, we'll see that our answer is just x plus 5 over x plus 3. And that's your answer, and you went ahead and simplified it. Yes, it's that easy when you know the number one rule. Number one rule is to factor, factor, factor. 